win, lose, or whatever, I just want to see them come out with, you know, show me the team that came out against St. Louis, and I'd be happy with that no matter what happens. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what I'm feeling, and I don't know. I mean, uh, it's kind of sucky towards the end of the year. We're, we're having to place guys on IR, and we'll see if others shine. I was really hoping to see Stamphon Anthony and Daniel Lasco towards the end of the season get a chance to really get a lot of snaps so you could evaluate them properly. You know, and we're, we're just not going to get that opportunity. I am pushing for Ingram to hit his 1,000-yard mark. I mean, I, I think the guy, after this amount of time, deserves it. You'd be surprised at um, – the stats and how well he's done when you when you really study it, what he's been able to produce in the Sean Payton era, especially the last three years, guys like him and Drew and Cooks and Thomas, there's just so much to look forward to next year. I just hate that I have to keep saying next year. It's it's depressing as a Saints fan, but it's also normal. I used to have my dad tell me that every year, so I guess it's not too bad. But as far as this Sunday goes. I think we can shut down Mike Evans again. We got to make sure we hold that run game down. But the offense is what's got to come through for us. If the offense can't score, if the game planning's sour, if we have turnovers like we did the last time we played them, there's no shot. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Teams that turn the ball over don't win. I mean, that, that's just facts. We won, When we won the Super Bowl, we had, what, plus 20 on turnover ratio. It was an insane amount. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to stop turning the ball. You got to take care of it. So, if that means you got to run Ingram and Hightower 30 times like you did against Carolina, do it. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have Drew Brees throw 500 times. You, you don't. I know he's the best player you got. I know he's an NFL record setter, but you ain't got to do that. So whatever we got to do to win, that's what I want to see. I'm rooting for a win. If they lose, I'm not going to be mad, but I have no, no figments of imagination towards playoffs. I'm actually upset with myself right now because I let you get away with an entire show and I did not bring up Mark Ingram's sideline tirade. But don't worry, we will revisit this soon enough because I will not let your boy slide with having that temper tantrum on the sideline, even if look, it may have been the right move for him to make. Look, here, here's my thing with this. I'll say it quickly. Kyle doesn't mind when we we'll go over a little bit. I don't agree. I talked to Nick about this underhill. I mean – when I was able to finally get my Saints fandom out the way and look at it from a non-biased opinion, what he did is not okay. It's not okay to get in your coach's face and yell and cuss on national TV. It's not. I will say this, though. I, one, I understand his frustration. To me, as a guy who played football, obviously not on the NFL level, I'm, I'm not that guy. I'll never try to act like I am. But when you're in a position, especially when you make the play, like for him, when, you, when you're able to get that first down – as a running back inside the – what was the – a nice little three-yard run to get the first down. You're inside the two, inside the three. You deserve to get the opportunity to score that touchdown. I realize Tim Hightower, he's playing against his former team. It's a day for him, and Sean Payton has shown he will try to get the player his record or his special day. He's done it with Drew. He did it with Jimmy Graham. He did it with uh, Deuce McAllister when Deuce McAllister was going to break the Saints TD record. I mean, he, he's shown that he'll do that. But Hightower had his touchdown. Ingram felt he deserved one, you know, and, and that's what it came down to. And here's my other thing on Ingram. Everybody's getting all – I saw people on Twitter talking about bench Ingram for the season and trade him, kind of like how they did Cooks. But why is everybody forgetting that Ingram has done this for six years? He's always been vocal and emotional and passionate on the field and on the sidelines. And then when he hits the locker room and when he hits outside the locker room, nothing. He doesn't talk bad about the team. He don't mention trades. None of that crap. He's just like that on the field. And he's right. He needs to control his emotions because that's not okay to yell and cuss at your coach on TV. It ain't. There's no excuse for it. But everybody's acting like this isn't the same guy who's been getting ticked off when he trips up and doesn't run for a touchdown instead he runs for a 20 or 30 yarder. I mean, he's always been that passionate guy on the field. So I didn't have as big of an issue as others are having. I'm just I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying – Y'all are not y'all because I'm not, I don't even know what you're going to say yet. But people on Twitter and Facebook are all on to the guy when he, it's not like he's showing you anything different. I mean, he's been doing this his entire career. So, no, you, you know, I'll, I'll say this. And I want to make sure I'm consistent with this. I feel like it was a horrible move and a horrible look on his part, much like I did when it came to Brandon Cooks. Because as you stated, this isn't. 
the first time Sean Payton has gone out of his way to make it about whatever guy. You know, I mean, hell, let's be honest. The St. Louis Rams, I'm sorry, the Los Angeles Rams game was all about Sean Payton and him getting his revenge. It's mm-hmm. the reason why Sean Payton took over the play calling that day. So with that being said, this is kind of what happens when you have a revenge type of game or the game has some type of real significance which is why I'm so ticked off at Mark Ingram because I'm like, dude, are you serious? Now, I, I'm not even going to give Mark Ingram a pass because it's not, it, it almost makes me even more irate than what happened with Brandon Cooks because it's not the first time Mark Ingram has done this. So is he a good teammate? Yes. Does he get emotional? Yes. But it doesn't mean that this is the first time that he's done it. It doesn't mean he's going to get a pass from me. I love what Mark Ingram has done for the Saints. I love that he's fourth all time and, and, and same floor when it comes to running backs. But, bro, you got to check your emotions. And I don't mean just because you're sitting out saying, you know, I have to do a better job of controlling my emotions. Nah, bro, you're a grown man. In a game in which you were winning, you hung half a hundred on, on, on Arizona like it was nothing, and you're complaining because you didn't get a chance to actually score, even if. You carry if Mark Ingram would have would have took the ball, went ninety eight yards, tripped up on a two yard line, and Sean Payton would have pulled him the next play. So be it, bro. Would you have? Did you have a right to be upset? Yes, because you earned the right to get into the end zone. Yes, you did. But don't act like it ain't never happened before. I've seen this happen in the NFL time after time after time. They had there's a reason why they have a guy called a third down running back or a goal line specialist. I'm pretty sure whoever plays in New England would love to get the touches instead of watching LeGarrette Blunt stand on the sidelines for, 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 for 12 minutes on a drive and then come in right when we get to the goal line and he collects the touchdowns the way he has like an NFL record for touchdowns this year as far as on a goal line or a mm-hmm. Patriot record. I'm sorry, I can't remember which one it is. I'm sure the other running back would love to get the accolade. But it wasn't about you that day, bro. Sit down, calm down, shut up. Because here's the reality of it. I'm not mad at Brandon Cooks for being Brandon Cooks. I'm not mad at Mark Ingram for being Mark Ingram. I'm mad simply because, and I'm lashing out only because you're doing it because you feel as if the team is going nowhere. Right, wrong, or indifferent does not matter. You're doing it because this is a losing season. If the Saints were 12 and 4 right now, heading into the playoffs, I don't think Ingram cries like a little Jenny woman. Because he, he didn't get the touches. But I don't me, know if that would like man. Because I remember him being emotional in 2014. You know, when we were the 2014 team. 2014 wasn't a great year. 2013 was a better year. Okay, 2013 is maybe what I was thinking about. But, the, but, I mean, you yes, were ranked fourth on defense and made the playoffs. He, yes, he pouted a bit. But I don't think it, it's going to be – uh, what, what I mean is this. I don't think Ingram is not going to be Ingram. And that's why I wanted to make sure I prefaced it by said. Yes, I understand he's done it before. My point is that it just seems as if now everybody's taking their turn. Brandon Cooks wants to voice his opinion. Mark Ingram wants to voice his opinion. Maybe somebody else decent to voice their opinion. You know, I'm sick of hearing it simply because it just seems as if, number one, you're doing it because you understand. This team ain't going to the playoffs. It's all about me getting my numbers now. Number two, it makes me feel like maybe, just maybe, Sean Payton is losing the locker room or he's lost his touch. Whichever one it is, and I've called Sean Payton out before when I asked last week, what the hell happened to you? Whatever is going on right now, it just seems as if there are a bunch of me guys, and it starts with Sean Payton. The Rams game was about him. The following game was about Brandon Cook. The next game, Mark Ingram wants to make it about him instead of making it about Hightower. Bro, I, I'm, I'm sick of this team. I don't care if you're emotional. I don't care if you're you know, passionate about winning the game. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is one thing and one thing only, W. That's it, win. And if you, you, you're, seven, you're six and eight, you have no right to complain about touching the ball right now because you getting a touchdown wasn't going to make a difference just now because the playoffs is over with, and that's what it seems like you all are going for. Well, I mean, you know, we ain't in the playoffs, but I know if I get nine touchdowns, I get $125,000. Am I mad at that? Like me? I'm not getting 125000 <laughs> I'm a little bit mad that you, you know, I'm a little bit mad on, not that you, you want to hit your incentive, but you want to hit your incentive just because you realize you're not going anywhere. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I would feel a little bit differently if the team was twelve and four, and, and you know, Ingram, you know, uh, or maybe if the team was, you know, twelve and four, and maybe Ingram was lashing out because it was like, you know, I, I could have helped just now. I'm, I don't. I'm, I could be rambling. I don't know. I just feel like the only reason why everyone's starting to speak out is because they realize the play, they're basically packing up and ready to go home for the off season. I don't like that attitude. Here, here's with me. I, I get. What, what you're trying to say but it reminds me i know we've quoted this movie several times but one of my favorite quotes from the replacements is good players want the football that that's ingram for me and and i think as fans we need to get away from this mentality that everybody seems to have that we're just playing this for the love of the game yeah people in the nfl love football but let's stop lying to ourselves like they're there for camaraderie and companionship and because football is the greatest sport in the world. No, they're there to have a job and make money. That's what they're there for. It's not just about lovey-dovey, this is a great, I mean, the huddle atmosphere, all that. No, that's not all what it's about. If the guy, these guys track their stats, we know that. And if Ingram knows that he gets a hundred grand for if he hits a thousand yards, he knows how Sean Payton happens to pull people out of games it's very possible Mark Ingram ends this season at, you know, what, 930 yards, 940 yards, and doesn't get a 100 grand bonus, which you had some people on Twitter, which really teed me off saying, well, 100 grand is only 3% of his salary. If he needs 100 grand, then he's misappropriating his funds. No, it has nothing to do with anything. I mean, you've got like, what, six to eight years in the NFL if you're a good player to make as much money as you can, and then you're out. No, it's a job. Let that man make as much money as he can. Now, I'm not disagreeing with you that he should not be emotional, and, and I'm not, not that he should be emotional, but he shouldn't do the things on this outline that he he did. So you got to get that that mentality out because a straight minded player doesn't do that. But I also say this: the good players in NFL history want the football. Ingram wanted the football to score, regardless of if they're winning or losing. I mean, Randy Moss, he wanted the football. He wanted to catch the football. I mean, Tom Brady wants to lead the game-winning drive. Peyton Manning would not allow his backup quarterbacks to ever get reps with the first team because he wanted to be perfect every game because he wanted to win the game because he was that type of player. And that's what I see in Mark. That's why I think he needs to control his emotion, but I don't want him to lose that. And let me also make this point. You Right now, you have what we're calling angry Mark Ingram. Do you want to go back to complacent Mark Ingram, who wasn't like that and wasn't really on fire and was falling down after two or three yards when he got his foot touched? Or do you want angry Mark Ingram, who's punching the ground and getting ticked off when he's not able to score touchdowns, even if that means he keeps doing his little emotional outburst? I personally would take the flaws and go with angry Ingram than to go with quiet Ingram, who sits on the sideline, jogs on to the field when it's his turn to run the a gap run and then jogs back off and never says anything because i don't seem to have a a medium for ingram he doesn't seem to have a medium where he's emotional but behave he he either seems like he's angry and ticked off with the world and he takes it out on his shoulders or he's disappeared got me on that one i gotta admit you you got me when you ask me which one do i want and i definitely take angry mark ingram the only thing and I'm not I'm not opposed to this guy getting his money. If, if I made it sound like that to anyone out there listening, that is not my problem. I do not care. Personally, if Ingram runs for 2,000 yards, and I'm I'm happy for that. I know he came close one time, and Sean Payton pulled him. I think he had 46 yards to go, and Sean Payton pulled him, and he, he would have got his 1,000 yards and stuff like that. So I'm not opposed to seeing Mark Ingram hit his numbers. I'm not. I don't ever want Mark Ingram to put himself above what matters most. And that's what it feels like. Not only Mark Ingram, and you know what? Mm -hmm. Here's the reality of it. If Brandon Cook doesn't come out a few weeks ago and throw that temper tantrum, and Mark Ingram does what he does on the sideline, I may feel totally different about this. But to me, it's not about Ingram, and it's not about Cooks anymore. It's about the accumulation of guys wanting to voice their opinion and speak out and, and be upset that they're not getting the ball. Last time we saw this happen, Kenny Graham got traded. Mm-hmm. You know, Kenny still, you know, had a little bit of too much of a lazy there attitude. He's no longer here, and he was young and cheap. Junior Gillette was great. Now, mind you, I have, you know, as Barry pointed out earlier, I've had my little deals with Junior Gillette. But 
he was great on the field. And I'm not saying everybody has to be a choir boy. I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. We don't we don't need good boys.